Today I visited my first radio rally in five years, the Rochdale and District Amateur Radio Society's rally to be exact. It had a really good turnout with upwards of 50 tables of goodies for the offering. I took a walk round and didn't see anything I needed or wanted jumping out at me, except a really nice example of a realistic DX200 receiver at a price I couldn't refuse. I took one more walk round and staring me in the face at the same stall was this mysterious box from a Leeds based company called Daytong. As I walked away oblivious, the friend I was with drew my attention to the box and I couldn't leave it there. In the depths of the USSR lived a high powered over the horizon radar which I've covered extensively on the channel. It ran about 40 megawatts affected radiated power slap bang in the middle of the HF bands. This beast made a racket like radio amateurs and listeners had never heard before. It certainly made the HF band which it was affecting a sheer misery. The general effect varied from being faintly tiresome to a complete wipeout and a noise blanker of the usual sort often wasn't too effective for various reasons. If the woodpecker was very strong, it often overloaded the first mixer in the wireless, and if that happened, all the noise blankers in the world wouldn't be able to do a thing about it. The blankers in some radios seemed to cope with some woodpecker pulses, but for a real solution, you really needed something more substantial, which is where the contents of this box came in. This cost me just £10, and I couldn't leave it there. This gadget is the model SRB2 Auto Woodpecker Blanker and it's basically a small box which was connected between the antenna and the radio and also between the audio output of the radio and an external speaker. The usual SO239 sockets and phono sockets were provided and it required a 12 volt power supply. A red LED showed when the power was applied, another red LED showed when the blanker part of this was active, blinking away at the blanking rate. Amazingly, within about a second of it being switched on, it would seem to lock onto the woodpecker's pulsing, and there was sudden silence. The blanker actually takes out a byte of the RF signal incoming at the chosen repetition rate. It dealt with 10Hz and 16Hz pulses, although the woodpecker was never heard using 16Hz pulses. So, a hole, for want of a better word, gets knocked in the signal, and the effect took a bit of getting used to. Using slow AGC, a strong SSB signal sounded very odd, although it was perfectly readable, and going to a faster AGC setting made matters better. It was a very good piece of kit as long as the chap at the other end didn't talk too fast because if he did you could miss a couple of words at a time. On weaker signals the device worked very well because there was no way you'd have known they were there when the woodpecker was doing its thing but they magically emerged when the blanker was turned on. On CW the effect of large bytes being taken out of the signal depended on how fast the person was sending and whether you were feeling wide awake enough to get the essence of the message. Overall however the situation was always improved when the blanker was in circuit. Like all good ideas it didn't come cheap. The price of £86.25 included VAT and the automatic woodpecker blanker was available from Dayton stockists or from Dayton themselves at Spence Mill Mill Lane in Leeds. So that's a look at quite a remarkable piece of kit you don't see often nowadays, the Auto Woodpecker Blanker from Daytong. If you want to know more about the woodpecker itself and the crazy conspiracies that surrounded it, as well as attempts to take it off the air, then I'll link two videos below and at the end of this one.